Hello and welcome to 5-Minute Math. Today we are looking at the 6th grade concept of properties of operations. This is standard 6.7D in the great state of Texas and we are using item number 1 off the redesign practice online star test. If you haven't done so already, please go ahead and take a moment to pause the video, work this problem out on your own, unpause it, and we will look at our answers together. So we have this expression here, 5 parentheses x minus 3. We need to find an equivalent expression. So let's open up our graph draw feature, expand it out here, increase the transparency so we can see what's going on behind here, and we'll use draw. So this is a very important property of operation that you're going to use all throughout sixth grade and quite honestly, the rest of your mathematical career. And this is a visualization of something that we like to call the distributive property. And so let me illustrate that for you. So when you look up the distributive property, you, you'll see something like this. You'll see A parentheses B plus C equals, and then you'll see AB plus AC. And it's just a whole bunch of letters, might not mean too much. But what happens is when you've got something going on inside of parentheses and you've got something being multiplied on the outside of that parentheses, as long as you keep the operation, notice how that's plus and that's plus, you can actually multiply that inside both of those separately. So you distribute that A into a B plus C so let me show you an example, right? So let's say A equals 2, B equals 3, and C equals 4. So we'll say 2, and then we'll say B is 3 plus 4 equals, and then we'll have 2 times 3 plus 2 times 4, right? So let's just substitute here. So 3 plus 4 makes 7, so 2 times 7 is going to equal 2 times 3, 6, plus 2 times 4, 8. You know, so they both equal 14. That's the distributive property. That's what we're doing right here. So if you can't visually see it, I would suggest let's go ahead and just substitute something in for x. Now, if you want to make x 0, that's fine, but since it's going to be x minus 3, uh, it is going to be a negative number. So let's let's make it a little bit larger. Let's say x equals 5. You can make x anything you want to, right? And then what we could do is now we can substitute that in to this 5, x minus 3. And then we'll say 5, and we're going to put in that 5 right there for the x minus 3. So it's order of operations. 5 minus 3 happens first, so we're looking for one of these to make 10. So let's see what happens if we do this A right here. So I've got 5, my x is going to be 5 minus 3, so that's going to end up being 25 minus 3. Oh, that's 22. You notice all this does is it just takes the parentheses off, so that keeps the 5 times the x, but that doesn't let the 5 multiply by the 3. You've got to distribute the 5 to both the x and the 3. And taking the parentheses off doesn't do that because now the 3 is not multiplied by 5. So this just subtracts 5 minus 3 makes 2. That doesn't make any sense. 2 times 5, yeah, that makes 10. That's not anything that we need here. Now x minus 15, so they just multiplied 5 times 3. So I've got 10 minus 15. That's going to be negative 5, so that doesn't make any sense either. So let's try this last one. So 5x minus, okay, so 5 times 5 minus 3 times 5, so that's 25 minus 15. There's my 10. So you see how this 5x is the 5 times that x, and then we distributed that 5 into the 3 times 5, and that's what this is. So that's the distributed form of this expression up here. So that is my answer, D.